I'm shooting coach Mike Dunn, and welcome to How to Shoot a Basketball. On today's episode of How to Shoot a Basketball, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, near and dear to my heart, which is the push versus the pull, okay? Now, in general, layman's terms, just to begin, the push versus the pull is the movement in which we move or move the basketball, or the movement in which the basketball moves up our body, okay? So a push movement, right? If I'm pushing away, that's a push movement, kind of similar to a pass, right? I'm pushing that ball towards its intended target, right? A pull movement would be me pulling this ball back and then eventually it going forward. So what I'm trying to do when I shoot is I want to create as little direction change as possible. The less direction change I can create, the easier it is to keep the momentum of the ball moving along the path that I want it to move around or move on, right? So I don't, I don't want to always think about um, just how fast things are moving. We'll get to that point too. But if we can keep things moving in a generally straight line and have it not change the direction, and then we couple that in with our ability to sequence correctly, which we'll talk about in later episodes, we're going to be able to shoot the ball not just a long way, but we're going to be able to shoot it very accurately as well. Okay, so to get started, what is a pull? Okay, a, a pull is when that basketball starts, we'll just say we'll start in our one position here. A pull happens when the ball is pulled back to its position of leverage, right? The position that we get to or that we mo almost all of us get to in order to get underneath the basketball and get it to lift up in the air, right? So if I'm pulling, right, and think about just taking my body away at this point and only watch the path of the basketball. If I pull this ball, I pull it to this position and now it goes forward. So the path that it takes is kind of this roundabout path backwards and then it goes forwards, right? So if you only watch the basketball and you thought, hmm, what's the most efficient path that ball could take to get from A to B, A being the starting point, B being in the hoop, you would see this, this movement that happens backwards and then forwards. It's not the most efficient path for the ball to get there, right? As opposed to what we call a push, being the ability to now take that ball from here at one position. Now you see, I got a bit more connected here. I'll show you a pull from a connected place too, but I'm, a, I'm nice and connected here. And in this position, right, if I think about taking the ball from point A to point B here, right, the most direct path would just be this straight line up, right? But I'm not able to keep my points of leverage doing so. So what I do as a result is the angle that I create from my shoulder to my elbow to my wrist right here is going to repeat here in my two position. And the way that I can do that is just by driving the ball up on a push and that is going to eliminate movement in itself. So I'm in my one position and now it's just a push to the two. And while the ball will travel backwards a little bit, it's not nearly as much of a travel backwards as what happens on the pull movement. The pull movement, the ball comes here and all momentum is halted before it goes forward again. Now, there are successful, very successful pull shooters. The thing with pulling is that you just have to be more perfect than not. In my opinion, the more perfect we have to be, the harder it is to make shots. The more you find yourself having those days where everything's going in and then the next day, you can't buy a bucket. And that's what we're trying to eliminate. I work with tons of players that are just beginning to play the game along with players that are trying to find a shot to maybe extend their careers, whether that be in the NBA, overseas, wherever have you, right? And what we're trying to do is we're always trying to simplify. The big thing in shooting is that we're not trying to add pieces, we're trying to take away pieces. And over time, the more we take away, the easier it is to repeat. So on our push movement, right? If we think about what I talked about earlier in terms of if this ball right here, and you just watch this ball, and we know it has to go A to B being the hoop, I'm much, if you, the ball path that this takes, you're much more inclined to think that it's a realistic ball path by moving to the two, and then to the through, there's a small movement backwards, but it's a much more efficient ball path in order for the ball to get to where it needs to go uh, in the shortest amount of time. And by doing so, we're now able to really take advantage of the energy that we can transfer from our body into the basketball. Now, there is such thing as having the ball in this close connected one position and then pulling it as well. And a lot of times with shooters, what you can see it is in the shoulder. So I'll show you front view. 
If you're trying to keep that ball connected to kind of keep that ball moving along that imaginary arc, right? If you pull, you'll see shoulders go up. If shoulders go up, you know we're in trouble. Because if shoulders go up, that means elbows are leading. And if elbows are leading, that means eventually the wrist is going to have to catch up. On our, pull, on our push motion, you want to more so think about leading with the wrist. So wrist moves, elbow follows, and then finally that shoulder comes underneath. We get underneath that basketball, and now we're able to continue that nice push, mo push motion uh, with the momentum that we generated to the basket. Okay, so pushing is a really, really good way for especially for somebody just learning to shoot uh, to start to get some real consistency with the lines that they start to move the ball on and then the power that they're able to generate. Keep shooting.